Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to Organo Living Silica's webinar. Today, we will be talking about silica and its many benefits. Stay tuned and learn a thing or two. Now, let's get started. So you're probably wondering what is silicon. Sounds familiar, right? Well, the base element is silicon on the table of elements we all remember being taught in chemistry in junior high and high school. It's primarily going to be quartz if it's a mineral type. It's also available in other stones, just as jasper, mica, and zeolite, just to name a few. It is the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust next to oxygen. In our bodies, when we're born, we tend to have seven grams of silicon present, which is important to be aware of. I do want to mention, we talk about silica and silicon. Silica is actually the term used to refer to a combination of silicon plus oxygen. That is what's going to make it assimilable by our bodies. Silica is also the term used to indicate dietary sources of silicon. For example, what our bodies are able to digest, absorb, identify as nutrients. When we say X part of our bodies use silicon, we refer to silicon extracted from silica. The terms may be used interchangeably when we refer to the dietary form of silicon and not in edible forms. The next few studies I'll touch on will be on sex or gender to be quite exact, which will be abstracts and quotes. Gonk in school, quoted by Desmonti in 1988, absorbed 35% less silicon content in muscular tissue in females compared to those of males. That would make sense, of course, since males tend to have much more muscle mass than females. But there's another point that it's important to know that silicon is not only in our bones and other parts of the body, but it's also in our muscular tissue. Now, when we speak about silicon in relation to age, Monclaw, quoted by Desmonti in 1988, observed a general decline in silicon levels with age. For example, silicon content in the integumentary system decreases by 30% in older age groups compared to those of a younger age group. That's just mentioning one part of our body, though it declines in all parts of the body, particularly in middle age. Intestinal absorption of silica also decreases with age. In regards to pathologies, in the aortic wall, silicon content is four times higher in children than that in adults. Silica content in the aorta, the thymus, and the skin in humans also decreases with age. These are very important to know as we experience the changes from youth to middle age to elder age. We notice these changes in our bodies that occur very gradually. And in this respect, regarding silica, we need to know that the quantity of it decreases, which is why we need to supplement it. So as mentioned previously, we had the issue with males having more silica than females due to the muscle mass. Now we have the issue where estrogen levels decrease in women with age and the absorption of silicon reduces simultaneously. This explains the tendency toward decalcification of the bones. At the beginning of the decalcification process, silicon concentration in tissues dramatically decreases up to 50% compared to minerals such as calcium or sulfur, which only decrease 5 to 8%. So it's not a case of all the minerals declining at a gradual rate. It's more so the silica in general in the bone. And this is why you see it particularly affects women more than men although men, of course, do also contract osteoporosis. Silicon levels do decrease about 1% every year with aging. Silicon loss is more intense from the ages of 35, 40 years onwards. It can be later, it can be sooner, depending on the body, depending on genetics, depending on the use of the body as well. Interesting enough, teenagers have 400% more silicon than seniors ages 70 to 80 years. Silica diminishment does lead to reduced collagen production and many other molecules. Not only do the silica levels decrease with the body, the absorption of silica we normally would take in through dietary intake, the absorption levels also decline. So we actually have to take in more silica to achieve a similar level we would have had years before. Now silica in relation to the metabolism. Our bodies do not accumulate large amounts of silicon, but do require a permanent intake. It has a direct influence on absorption of specific minerals required to maintain health. It is considered a catalyst, accelerates the absorption of calcium, magnesium, iron, and phosphorus. 
All of these are critical for new bone creation. Without silica, the connective tissue has an inability to retain moisture, which is what allows for flexibility. Connective tissue consists of collagen, elastin, mucopolysaccharides, and mucus carbohydrates. Silica in itself, while it has numerous benefits, the catalyst for other body mechanisms, it also works as how all other minerals are observed. Here, we see calcium, magnesium, iron, and phosphorus, all are critical for new bone creation. As we will see, silica is integral in creating new bone. Without silica, we are unable to retain moisture in our connective tissues, aka the flexibility, the ability to bend, to grasp, to move quickly, our hips, our knees, and whatnot, and also to produce collagen and elastin, which also, as we will see, is critical in terms of anti-aging, photo-aging of the skin as we get older. Now we are going to spend a bit of time showing how silica is needed for bone. Silica is needed for calcium to be properly absorbed. Silica in conjunction with other minerals such as phosphorus, boron, magnesium, etc. aids in bone growth, strength, flexibility, and density. Here we see an example where too much silica, but not enough calcium, our bones bend easily, it's elastic, whereas a bone that has too much calcium but not enough silica becomes brittle. It shatters easily. It's a balance. It's fascinating how our bodies are a total complete balance where we require a balance of minerals and nutrients in our bodies in order to grow and stay healthy. Silica also enables bones to be more elastic and combined with calcium makes bones thicker, which is why when we're younger, we have the ability to survive impacts such as jumping off trees, jumping from high elevations, it's much easier than when we're older. When we're older, our bones are thicker. They're more elastic. It may not make much sense how thicker bones are more elastic, but it's because they have more tensile strength. And that's what the silica with the other minerals are able to do. One thing to be aware of is silica deficiency results in malformed or weak bones. Today, it's very much a case where calcium is prescribed to be used for bone health, but actually when it should be silica. Most people get enough calcium through their dietary intake, but as you should see, doesn't happen with the silica. The other issue, of course, deals with what we refer to as osteoporosis. Increasing calcium intake alone without the silica actually accelerates the leaching process of existing calcium within bones, and bones constantly replenish. So we have the body unable to properly absorb calcium. It will still continue creating new bone, but that bone as we see here will be more porous compared to a denser, healthier bone. One which would have all the minerals properly absorbed. Here we see bone health following a fracture. Here's when silica is very critical. We always say within the first 30 day cycle, here's those 35 days. However, within that first 30 day cycle is when a much larger silica intake than usual is required for fracture. Silica helps a great deal with after the inflammation period, which is as you see here, days zero to five, days five through 16, the, fibro the fibroblast, the osteoblast, that's all new bone being formed and leads to the previous slide. If the body is not properly using the nutrients it needs, the minerals that it needs, which silica is a balancer sort of speak, which enables good absorption, the bone will not heal as quickly as it normally would, and that's why it's critical for that formation. In regards to silica and skin, we were talking about collagen earlier, and that's one of the main benefits we're going to speak of here. Collagen is the main protein of the body. Silica activates the enzyme proleyl hydroxidase that boosts collagen reticulation, in other words, strength. It's not the elasticity of our skin, but more so the structure of our skin. It's been shown repeatedly that the higher the silica content of collagen, the more structure there is on each of the fibers. In other words, there's more girdles and supporting tessels. It's almost like a bridge network, like a ladder. Silica is also integral in the production of elastin. Elastin is what makes our skin elasticity. Elastin works with collagen and is also silicon rich. As we age, these levels naturally decrease. It's part of the aging process. What we can do, of course, is increase our supplementation, which is the process we're after to enable the body to maximize 
possible production of collagen, elastin, and that's why silica supplementation is critical. Glycosamilicans, these provide strength and structure to the skin's tissues. Skin is a very complex matrix. It has several layers. As we see here, it includes the collagen. It includes the glycosamilicans, a gel-like matrix. It includes moisture. The silica is able to provide moisture to the cells as they build collagen fibers, as they build elastin, so that it maintains that measure of youth. As it produces, it enables the body to maximize its natural production. Let's take a quick recap of what we just saw and viewed. Skin tissue is silica rich when we're young and depletes as we age. The most effective manner to boost collagen levels is to boost silica levels. We saw how taking collagen supplements alone is not sufficient enough to guarantee an increase in existing collagen levels. The effects of using silica are more pronounced than by only consuming collagen. Silica provides the natural pathway for collagen creation. Silica has a long history of it being used for wound repair. Previously, it was prescription grade only. Now it's over the counter. Those, however, are chemical silica. They have several chemicals inside. What we here at Silicium Laboratories recommend, of course, is natural silica, which do not contain any chemical composition which our bodies do not need. As we were referring to, silicon in itself is essential for the new matrices of collagen and elastin fibroplasts in which are accelerated when the skin is rich in silica.